afternoon and welcome to Bible class with yours uh, truly, Pastor Curtis Robert Grant, to the Zion Hope family, to all of you that have come to be with us on today. We are grateful to God for another privilege to study the Word of God. And so I pray that you have your Bibles with you so that we can take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Um, last uh, time we had the privilege of being together, we was in back, uh, chapter 9 where Paul was trying to gather the bounty together uh, for the church at Jerusalem. And uh, 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 hopefully that we learned some things out of that presentation in chapter 9. <clears throat> and so now Paul now finished chapter 9 and uh, about the bounty of getting the money to the Jerusalem from the church at Macedonia and the church at Corinth. And I'm pretty sure other churches participated in trying to make sure that the sister church in Jerusalem was okay. Uh, which brings us to uh, one of the things we all should consider that as a member of the kingdom of God, we should make sure that we work together, that we might support the churches that are struggling in these times because we are all one body in Christ. All right. And so uh, Paul shows us the very demonstration and expression of love through God by helping us realize that we are each other, our brother's keeper. And so uh, hopefully we uh, understand that and begin to uh, um, express that kind of love to those who are in need, uh, especially the churches that God has ordained for our education. And so 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we feel, we see Paul uh, dealing with the Corinthians concerning some of the false apostles who had made some very, very bold uh, uh, claims against Paul. And uh, after Paul had labored uh, with these Corinthians and had uh, uh, did a lot of work trying to get them spiritually where they were uh, and then uh, he experienced you know uh, uh, people uh, coming in to distort what Paul uh, had been trying to teach the Corinthians and so this is the atmosphere that Paul is now dealing with out there in chapter 10 and so Paul says now I Paul myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ who in presence I am based or lowly amongst you, uh, being absent, I am bold towards you. All right? And so uh, he wants to submit to us that, you know, when I'm in your presence, I'm trying to be meek and humble because that is the, the character of God. But because I am not there, my letters that I write to you are bold because I need you to understand that even though my presence is there, the very things that I'm saying to you are very important. And so the letters are bold. Uh, in the fact that I am not there, uh, but my presence with you, I am always trying to be humble and trying to express myself in the character of Christ. But the things that I say and the authority that I carry is no less the authority that I carry, whether it be bold or humble. Uh, and so at the end of the day, I don't think that uh, some people, uh, you know, requires for you to be very bold uh, when you deal with them. And uh, I think that the children of God with the Spirit of God are very meek. We shouldn't have to be bold with people. We should be able to instruct them uh, with the instructions of Christ and because of the Spirit that dwells within the believer, we should be able to follow the instructions that's given to us. All right, verse 2 says, But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with you that uh, with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh, all right? And so in other words, uh, you know, Paul's and I, you know, they, they are bold. I'm, I'm bold towards some, but, but, but we don't fight like we fight in the flesh, all right? Because you find out that fleshly fighting uh, does not profit the child of God. You find out that, you know, uh, battling with people in the flesh, all right, only pulls the fleshliness out of you, all right? You have to be careful that you don't let people... Uh, bait you into uh, uh, fighting back in in your flesh because when you fight back in your flesh your flesh is going to pull out the evil in you because your flesh does not acquiesce to God all right your flesh is evil it does not like God don't submit to God and so when you fight in your flesh you always express the evil that's in you so you got to be careful that the devil don't bait you and that people don't bait you in fighting in your flesh. You have to learn, that's what Paul wants to teach us here. For he says in verse 4, 
for we for the weapons of our warfare and our colonel. And he wants to help us understand that when we get ready to fight, the weapon of our warfare, and he wants to understand that this is a war, and, and we are always engaged in warfare, all right? But the weapons of our warfare, all right, is not carnal, all right? And he wants to help the saint understand that when this fight takes place, it cannot be in the physical, all right? Because when it's in the physical, you find out that the evils that are in you are surfacing in such a manner that we no longer look like the child of God. We look like the children of the devil, all right? And we have to be careful that we don't let people bait us in to operating out of our flesh. That's why we have to learn how to respond and not how to react, okay? Because when you react, most of the time you react in your flesh. But when you learn to respond, you think, process, and then you respond with a godly character so that people will always see God working in you, all right? And so he wants to help us understand, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. He says, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, all right? And that wants to help us understand that when we get ready to enter, engage in this warfare, that this warfare is not fleshly. He says we have to fight through God. And that means that when we fight through God, we have to always be prayerful. For the Bible says that uh, men should always pray and not faint. All right? And that always praying does not mean the posture of kneeling down and on your knees saying, Our Father which art in heaven. It means that our mind should always be in tune with God so that God can direct us uh, dealing with the things we have to deal with face to face in the physical world. So that we learn to deal with things according to the character of Christ so that we don't enter into our flesh and allow people to see the ugliness that really dwells inside, all right? And so he said uh, that, that um, uh, uh, he said that, but, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, all right? And a stronghold is just the thing that holds you strong, all right? And so you, you find out that the stuff that you struggle with, all right, can be defeated if you defeat it through God. All right? And that's the thing we have to really begin to understand because most of the time we try to apply physical things to spiritual things and it don't work like that because Jesus makes it very clear that which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit. And he wants to submit with that is that those two don't mix. All right? And so if you're going to deal with spiritual issues, you have to have a spiritual platform in order to do that. All right? And so at the end of the day, you must understand the power of dealing with the spirit because once you get the spirit together, then the spirit in terms will give you directions on where the flesh should end up, all right? And I'm hoping this makes sense to you, all right? And so it says, number five says, casting down imaginations, all right? And you have to understand the imagination uh, uh, can, can go a lot of places and especially if those imaginations are not uh, 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 of, of kingdom things, of things, of pure minds, of, 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 of good things, all right? Uh, imagination can be devilish, all right? Very devilish. And we don't want those imaginations, and that's why you have to be careful even when you watch TV, the stuff that they plan in your head, uh, the things that we listen to on records and tapes and, and things of that nature. You have to be careful how the devil plants things in your head because that ends up becoming your imagination. And so you have to be careful what you watch, you have to be careful what you listen to, you have to be careful who you listen to, because those seeds that are being planted in your head oftentimes manifest themselves in imaginations that are not necessarily godly, all right? And so Paul wants to submit then that when you got those kind of imaginations, you have to cast them down, all right? You have to cast them down because if you don't, they will take root and they will bear fruit, all right? And so he says, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. All right. And so what Paul does here is he helps you understand that when the knowledge of God is not present in the child of God's life, then he loses his ability. All right. To cast down imaginations and to deal with any high thing, because when you don't have a standard set through the word of God, then in your mind is a free-flowing field, all right, that has no boundaries, all right, because what happens 
with the Word of God is that the Word of God sets boundaries, all right, so that when you go past the boundary, boundaries, you already know that the thoughts that you're thinking are not those of God. You see what I'm saying? And so a lot of people don't want to really embrace the Word of God, read the Word of God, study the Word of God, because the Word of God is the very thing that gives us the boundaries to help us fight against the evils that we're faced with every day, all right? And so we have to understand that the knowledge of God is the key here, all right? Because when the knowledge of God is present, then it helps you cast down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the word of God or the knowledge of God. And then, because you do know the knowledge of God, you can take those imaginations and those high things and bring them under subjection to the word of God because you know what the word of God says and so you can actually alter the thoughts into the place where the word of God will uh, help you to bring those things into captivity. All right? And say, and let's see, uh, unto the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all dis disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled, all right? And so you can fight against uh, the disobedience when the word of God is present because the first thing you have to do is acknowledge it. Then once you acknowledge it, then you have the power to fight it. But we don't fight it in the flesh, we fight it in the spirit, all right? And that's the battle that we encounter every day of our lives is having these evils that come against our minds and in our, our situations that we have to be careful, rooted and grounded in the word of God, so that we can first of all see the evil, and then once we see the evil, then we can address the evil according to the spirit of God, so that we can cast it down, bring it under subjection, and bring it under the obedience of Christ, all right? And I'm hoping that made sense for some of you, uh, because at the end of the day, this spiritual warfare is something that, you know, you can't see, but it's real. All right. Uh, these, uh, you know, every day we so we so busy just trying to survive and just trying to get through life that we don't see what the devil is doing to our mentals. All right. He is constantly feeding our minds with trash. All right. On Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of Twitters. All and and and, and y'all, we don't realize it, but that's what he's doing. Uh, that cell phone. All right has been the thing, if you, if you don't, don't have to believe me, just watch around. Everybody is so preoccupied with the cell phone, they ain't even looking up when they walk, all right? And then you got people in cars driving trying to look at cell phones, all right? And you look at that word cell phone, you, let me tell you something, it's a cell for your mind, all right? Just like a prison, a cell for a person who, who breaks crimes, the, well, that cell phone is a, is a prison for your mind. And you don't even realize it most of the time, but most people are so stuck to that doggone phone, but what, what's coming out of the phone is what's killing you because the information and the stuff that you get out the phones are not necessarily godly information, all right? Uh, and when you get stuff in your head, all right, the very things that the seeds that are planted in your head by Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and all those other things that we look to all day long, all right, you wonder where these thoughts are coming from, where they were planted in your head, all right? And you have to be careful with that uh, because I've always stated that the, you know, uh, that the, the technology that are being uh, presented to us in this day is actually the devil's toy because even though the technology is good, the people who use it are not good, all right? And so we're not, it's not the technology is bad, it's just the people who use it are bad. And so if you got good technology that put in the hands of bad people, then the technology becomes bad for the people, all right? Because at the end of the day, evil folk don't use technology for good. Evil folks use technology to do evil, all right? And so even though it's good technology, all right, it's the evil hands that we have to fret with, all right? And so at the end of the day, you have to be careful how you let stuff get planted in your head. And so uh, that's what I want to say, and hopefully it will help some of you really begin to understand um, uh, this spiritual warfare because it is real whether you want to believe it or not. Uh, 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 verse 6 says, And having an all readiness to revenge all disobedience and when your obedi obedience is fulfilled. Verse 7 says, Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? He's asking the question, and we do oftentimes. If a man 
trust to himself that he is Christ. Let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. All right? And so we always looking on the outward appearance, all right? But what makes a, 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 a child of God is what's on the inside. All right, and that's what we have to be uh, conscious of and very careful of that it is the person on the inside that makes me who I am. And so we have to be sure that what's on the inside matches that which is on the outside because when you start looking on the inside, the inside helps govern what you express on the outside. All right, and I'm hoping people can understand and hear this. For though I should boast somewhat more of, of our authority, which the Lord has given us. For edification and not for your destruction all right and so Paul is talking about uh, boasting in his authority because at the end of the day you have to realize that uh, uh, false apostles and false rumors have gone against Paul you know after he has established the people in Corinth and you have to always understand that 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 is a spiritual warfare that that is intensifies itself especially when it comes to ministry because anytime you're doing the work of God, you're going to always have somebody out trying to underline and take away your credibility and try to cut you down and make you look like you, you know, you're bad and all of that kind of stuff. And that's why you have to learn how to fight in the spirit. Because if you end up fighting in the flesh, you're going to look just as worse as they are. All right. And so Paul has to deal with. Uh, the people who are trying to undercut his authority, all right? And now Paul wants to boast on his authority to help the Corinthians to, to understand that I'm not boasting because I need to, because I'm just boasting because I'm in the flesh. I'm boasting to help you understand that just because they have broke down my authority or spoke down my authority don't mean that I don't have it, all right? I have authority and my authority has been given to me from Christ and I, I want you to realize that I use my authority to edify and not to destroy. I'm not here to break you down. I'm here to edify, to build you up, all right? But sometimes in order to build you up, I got to take some of the stuff out that ain't godly in order to build you up in the spirit, all right? And so he wants to help them understand that the edification of his authority is, uh, is what he uses authority for his edification and not for destruction. And we have to really be careful with authority. Because some people just don't know how to handle authority. Because authority is like fine wine for some people. It goes straight to the head. All right? Because when you feel inferior in your own personal struggles, when you give an authority, that authority goes straight to your head because without your authority, you feel you're nothing. With your authority, you feel like you're everything. All right? And you have to balance authority because if you don't, you're going to end up abusing people. You're going to end up destroying people instead of edifying people with your authority. And that's what happens in the church most of the time is that people get some authority and they become abusive with their authority. Because when you are uh, struggling in your own self-identity, uh, it's very easy for it to go straight to your head. But you have to know who you are, all right, that before you got the title, you were still who you were, all right? The title only gives you the ability to serve other people. That's what your title does. It don't give you no more authority. It don't give you no more anything. Because if you don't know who you are, then you think you're more than you are, all right, when you get a title. But when you know who you are and you get a title, it don't mess with you because you already knew who you were before the title arrived, okay? And so Paul wants to help us understand that his authority was for their edification and not for their destruction. Uh, and I should not be ashamed. Verse 9 says, that I may not uh, seem as if I'm terrified you with a le by a letter, all right? For his letters, they say, all right, and we're talking about the people who try to cut down Paul, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech is in uh, contemptible. And so uh, Paul is saying, listen, you know, uh, my letters are only strong because I'm not there, all right? But, uh, but when I'm in your presence, I'm trying to always operate in the spirit of Christ and so don't get it twisted. Don't think I can't bust your head to the white meat. I just don't because I'm trying to use uh, spiritual wisdom to reach you and to do the things that I need to do so that I can get you where you need to be, all right? But when I'm not there, all right, I need to write in ways that affect your spirit 
so that you can carry out what I'm sending to you. And so people want to talk about, you know, the fact that I write heavy letters, but when I'm there, I'm weak, I'm weak per se. All right, I'm humble. I'm not weak, I'm humble. I'm just trying to deal with you in a way that Christ would deal with you, all right? But when I'm not there, then I need to use the heaviness of the pen to get you to submit to what we need to do as children of God, all right? And so don't get it twisted, don't get it twisted, don't get it twisted, all right? Just because I'm nice, all right? Don't get it twisted, okay? Because at the end of the day, we're always trying to deal with people in a godly fashion, so that we, our presentations are always representative of what God wants the kingdom to look like. And so we have to be careful when we deal with people because sometimes we're just entirely too harsh, all right? Sometimes we don't even watch the verbiage that we use. Some of the stuff, you can't tell nobody, give me that paper off the table. There ain't no slaves around here. You know, man, well, do you mind reaching over there and giving me a, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you got to you choose the words wisely. Because sometimes you talk to people uh, 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 condescendently and, and making people feel like they're beneath you, and you don't even recognize you do it. But the bottom line is you have to watch the word you use because it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And so you got to be careful how you say what you say, all right? Because you have to remember nobody is your servant and that you have to always give the respect you want others to give to you because at the end of the day, that come out in your verbiage. All right? So you just don't tell nobody, give me. All right? Or, 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 you know, you have to ask people, may I have? Is it possible? You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to give you no speech or, or no lesson on speech, but I'm just saying uh, that's, that's one of the things that we have to deal with. Okay? Verse 11 says, uh, let such as one think this, that such as we are in word by letter, when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present, all right? So Paul said, don't get it twisted, all right? I can be just as bold in presence than I am with letter, but I'm just trying to operate under the Spirit of God so that nobody is injured or destroyed, all right, for my lack of insensitivity, okay? And so I'm hoping you're getting this stuff, all right? Uh, verse 12 says, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, all right? You got people that will sit around and brag on themselves, all right? Because, uh, you know, the truth of it is that they have to brag on themselves to build up themselves because they're already inferior in themselves, all right? Uh, but it says that uh, not that we dare to classify or to compare ourselves with some of those who are commending themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another, all right, and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding, all right? Because they're too busy comparing themselves with each other, all right? But at the end of the day, that is not the level in which we should operate. If we're going to compare ourselves with anybody, it should be Christ. And when you do that, you're going to always find yourself failing, all right? Because the standard that Christ sets is so much higher than what we operate that we always have a target to shoot for. Because when Christ is the standard by which we operate, then we're going to always have room to grow, all right? And so we don't want to compare ourselves with each other because, you know, some sinners are worse than others, all right? And you can feel good because you ain't as worse as the sinner next to you. But the truth of it is, all of us are sinners, all right? If you want to compare yourself to somebody, compare yourself to somebody who was tempted by sin but never sinned, which is Jesus Christ himself. That will always give you a target to shoot for, and that's why Paul says, I press toward the mark of the high calling, because that mark and standard that Jesus Christ set for us is so high that we always have room to improve, all right? And I don't know how some of you feel that you'll ever, never get to the place where you're complacent or you feel like you have arrived, because none of us have arrived, all right, until we meet Jesus face to face and God takes us out this flesh and gives us a glorified body and then we might talk about uh, being, uh, you know, somewhere close to Christ. But until then, we better pray, ask God to help us handle this flesh because this flesh is an ugly piece of work, all right? And so at the end of the day, uh, we want to make sure that we handle this flesh uh, 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 in a manner that it does not destroy the image of the kingdom of God, but it always presents to us the better uh, things that, that Christ would have us to have, all right? And so 
uh, it says, verse 13, but we will not boast of things with, without our measure, but according to the measure of the rich, of, of, I'm sorry, of the measure of rules which God has distributed to us. All right? Uh, let me move on down. A measure to reach even unto you. All right? And let me see if I can translate that for you real quick. Uh, because sometimes, uh, you know, uh, but we will not boast beyond limit, but we'll boast only with regards to the area of influence God has assigned to us, all right, uh, to reach even to you. And so God gives us a limit to, to boast, and that boasting it has nothing to do with us in flesh. It has to do with everything to do with Jesus Christ and what he did for us. And our boasting is in Christ. Our boasting in the, is in Jesus Christ, how he died, how he rectified um, sin. All, the owl of our boasting is in Christ Jesus. Because when we start entering into boasting about ourselves, then we have entered into the flesh. And that is not what we should do. We should always keep our focus on Jesus Christ and what he's did for us and how we can help people to become uh, very, very uh, spiritual uh, by continuing to focus on Jesus Christ and growing in the things of God, all right? And so at the end of the day, this is the uh, presentation that we give to you. I'm hoping that something has been said to help you today, and the Lord say the same. We will pick up uh, next Wednesday uh, and start doing what we need to do. For those of you that have heard this and know today you need to uh, uh, shoot for the mark, all right? Uh, we just say to you, you can give your life to Christ uh, and so you can uh, look at um, uh, zionhopenbc.org slash visit, and you can give your life to God today. Our membership academy will get with you as soon as possible uh, when you sign up, all right? And then don't forget every day at 1 o'clock we are praying, all right? Uh, the, uh, the Bible says we should always pray uh, and not faint. And if we are praying, we're not fainting. And if we are fainting, it could be very well that we're not praying. And so I'm hoping something has been said to help you to look at things from a different perspective because we are in spiritual warfare, whether you want to believe it or not, uh, because everything we deal with, all right, in the world of evil, all right, is something to deter or to reshape our minds, all right, that, is, that does not formulate to the character of God. And so if we're going to keep the character of God, there's a war going on because the, the devil wants to turn our character into uh, evil, and God wants to keep us uh, with the kingdom of God, the spirit of God, and so that war has to take place. And if I'm going to keep God's spirit uh, living healthily within me, God bless you and keep you as our prayer. Let us pray. Father, I pray now that you would begin to show us this spiritual warfare in a manner that we might fight to maintain your character and everything we do that we don't allow the enemy to draw us off base to get us into fleshly fights that cause us to look like demons. But God, that we express your character at every crossroad, every place that we have to deal with fleshly people and people who are evil. Help us to maintain our spiritual integrity and, and, and help us to maintain our character in such a manner that they will see Christ in us, that they will glorify the Father which is in heaven. Cover us with your blood and we'll be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.